Hi everyone, welcome back. And today I'm going to be doing a review on a telescope that's been sent to me recently by a company I actually originally hadn't heard of and it's called Sky Rover. They've sent me their 86MA Astrograph uh, Refracting Telescope and today I'm going to do a review about that scope and show you all about it. My name's Glenn and you're watching Astrobloke. So I took delivery the other day from Sky Rover, this rather nice package, and it's a very nifty looking case uh, with Sky Rover written on it. And inside here is their 86 MA scope. So we get this open and let's have a look. So as I say, a very nice looking case. And we'll open this up. And inside we've got some nice foam packing and the scope itself. Well, it feels nice and weighty. Always a good sign. So we'll just get it out of this bag. And I must say, that is a very nice looking scope. So this is the Sky Rover 86 MA. Very solidly built by the feel of things. It's nice and weighty, which is always a good sign. Got a nice metal dust cap at the end there with the Sky Rover emblem. And looking in there, let's put the dew shield back there. We've got the lens. And uh, We've got the carry handle on the top. It's on its own dovetail plate. Let's put that down there. We've got a dual speed focuser. That feels nice and smooth. Very smooth indeed. We've got our normal markings for distance of the focuser coming out. And we've also got a built-in rotator here uh, with graduation markings as well, which is always a useful thing to have. There's no playing that at all, and that's very smooth, very nice. I do like that on the uh, outer edges of the metal rings here, they've actually cut in some nice knurl bits, and that's going to help for grip. There's nothing worse than when something gets a bit tight and it's difficult to undo, and I normally have to end up grabbing a strap wrench or something to get it off, which is never a good thing. So it looks like we've got lots and lots of different ways of connecting on the back here. This will be threaded on. Yep, so we've got lots and lots of different connections here. And I did notice something else inside the box actually. And I'm going to take a look at that actually right now. So there was some little ring spacers here, which is quite nice to have. And it looks like, is this a reduce? Oh no, this is, no, there's no lens in there. This is literally just some more ways of attaching gear to the back of the scope. So different sizes etc which is very useful to have indeed so i'll get this uh set up quite easily i should think with a camera so in addition to the scope uh, sky rover also sent me the 0.8 reducing flattener that fits this scope uh, so we'll have a quick look at what's inside the box and that feels quite chunky so feels very nice in the hand so I'm assuming it's of very good quality we've got some threaded metal caps either end I actually prefer that to the plastic ones they stick on just feels a bit more premium nice knurled edges on them so no problems getting them off and we've got Skyrover 0.8 reducer flattener 
for the multi-purpose astrograph series and uh well it looks like a lovely lovely element in there but of course the proof is in the testing so we'll initially uh, run the scope natively and then we'll put the reducer on and see what this does this should speed the scope up a little bit and also give us a slightly wider field of view so we'll see what this does later so I will go into the full specs of this scope but I do know it's got an imaging circle of 44 millimeters which means it will support a full frame camera so my plan is to marry it up with Altair's 24 CFX camera uh, which is a full frame sensor it's also one shot color so not only can we get to see the star shapes we'll also see if there's any hint of chromatic aberration now the sky rover reports to have two ed elements in there so i expect the color correction to be really good i'm sorry if you can hear a load of drumming it's the rain on the roof of my observatory it's really bad at the moment but we do hopefully have some clear weather on the way and I'll be able to get this onto my Ioptron CEM and get it out in the garden and get some imaging done. Cool, it's really bad out there. So what do we do when the weather's bad? Well, I'll tell you what I do. I make myself a nice hot cup of coffee. This is the AG6 MA by Sky Rover and is described as a multi-purpose astrograph. The scope comes as an F7 602mm focal length setup with an 86mm aperture. It's described as a quad apochromatic structure and it has four pieces of glass in four groups and two of these pieces of glass are ED glass so should have great correction on the star colours. The image circle is 44 millimetres so will support a full frame camera. It's a lovely compact scope and comes in at a total weight of around five kilograms with everything on it the net weight of just the OTA is three and a half kilograms. Hands on it feels like a really nicely made scope. The finish on it is very premium and everything feels well machined and solid. Both the rotator and the focuser are nice and firm but very smooth to operate and the dew shield slides nice and smoothly but has enough tension that it doesn't feel like it will slide back down during the night while imaging. Okay, so that's everything set up for this evening. There's a possibility of an hour or two of clear skies. So at least we'll be able to get everything uh, focused in and uh, working, making sure that uh, it is ready for a full night of imaging. 
never know, we might get enough time to get something nice, but uh, we'll at least get everything set up tonight. So now I've had a chance to use the scope, I actually found it really nice. I've found the build quality to be of a very high level and it really does feel like a premiumly made scope. And uh, the actual use of the scope has been quite surprising. The stars that have come back have been a, a fantastic uh, shape. So I used a full frame camera on uh, the 86 MA and that was Altair's 24 CFX. So the 44 millimeter imaging circle uh, supports full frame, no problem at all. I had no vignetting in the corners and I'm gonna put up a sub now of the area that I imaged, which was the Tulip Nebula. And you can see there in the bottom right, uh, the Wolf Riot Star WR134. Now, as you can see, this image is quite busy with stars, but I've not touched it at all. I've just basically uh, taken one uh, FITS file, stretched it, and here it is. So uh, the main reason why I've left the stars as they are is so that you can see what they were like. And they are literally lovely and round all the way to the edges and the corners. In Nina, we can switch to a view which shows us all of the edges at the same time in close up. And as you can see, the stars are brilliant. Now, I was using a narrowband filter when I was doing this imaging because I was on the Tulip Nebula and WR134. And when the weather clears, because unfortunately, as soon as I'd finished this, it changed. I'll be getting back out and taking some images with no filters at all so that we can look at the chromatic aberration on this scope and make sure that those two ED glass elements in the quadruplet setup are uh, giving the correction that they promise. If it's anything like the star shapes, I'm expecting it to be really good. Now, what does this scope cost? Well, it comes from China. Um, at the moment, I hadn't, as I say, hadn't heard of Sky Rover. I've uh, looked into them and they do lots of optical uh, goods, lots of binoculars and spotting scopes. And that seems to be where their main market was. And they sort of pride themselves in their optics. They are now bringing out some telescopes for astrophotography. And I must say this first one is, well, that I've seen is an absolute corker. So they're looking now to reach out and obviously ship to Europe uh, and one place here, the UK. So what would one of these cost you? So the retail price of the 86 MA is $1,299. So once you add VAT and shipping costs and everything else, so you're looking in the UK of that being about £1,250 uh, delivered. The reducer is about 180 pounds, 175 to 180 pounds, depending on the exchange rate. And that would be an additional cost if you wanted that, but it is an optional extra. 
The scope comes in a lovely soft carry case. It's uh, finished really nice. It's got all the extras with it. So I think it's a very complete package. Um, and price wise, it's not too bad really. When you think an ASCAR uh, SQA85, although it's a faster scope, you're looking at nearly 2000 pounds. Now, if you add the reducer to the Sky Rover, you're pushing the price up a bit more, maybe 1400 but, and it's an F7, but with the reducer, it goes down to F5.6. But as you can see from the sub I've taken, um, it's gathering plenty of light. That 86 millimeter aperture at 602 millimeters focal length was really quite impressive. So no problems with it capturing the photons that you wanna get. They would ship it direct by FedEx to your door. So I can't see any problems there. And I know they're looking to release more products soon, so keep an eye out for them. Now, if you really did want one of these scopes and you put in the code ASTROBLOKE, you will get 10% off. So Sky Rover are offering a, a special discount from my channel. So 10% off of that, which is going to bring you down to about £1,200 with all of the other bits added on, shipping, etc., but I think that's actually quite a good price and uh, definitely something worth considering. Anyway, the best thing for me to do is to show you an image that I've captured with the scope so you can see exactly what it can do. I'm going to follow this video up with some more videos. I'm going to shoot without any filters so we can look at the chromatic aberration. And I'm going to do some images with the reducer so that we can see if that's going to cause any problems with the quadruplet design or not. They're saying it won't, and uh, looking at the quality of everything, I've, I feel fairly confident that it's gonna do a really good job. So I'm, I'm quite excited and looking forward to trying that out. But the image I took was Tulip Nebula with the Wolf Rat Star in the corner. Um, please enjoy it. If you've got any questions at all, put them in the comments section below. I'll be more than happy to answer them. If you haven't subscribed, why not? please do or please consider it and give this video a thumbs up. All of these things help the video get out to a much larger audience and they help my channel massively and I'm extremely grateful for anybody that does that. Thanks ever so much to all my channel members. Without you, well, I don't know where I'd be. I'm talking to myself most probably, but thank you ever so much for all your amazing support. It means a lot. So all it needs now is to share this image with you and I'll be back soon with some more images. But until next time, please take care. And of course, I wish you all clear skies.